the things that that characterize a good mobile site and the fact that it's a different environment and has some limitations based on the size of the screen, but it also offers some opportunities that aren't available um, in a desktop environment. What we want to do today is we want to get more nuts and bolts about it and get into the specifics of developing uh, a good mobile website. We made a few observations last time. We said, first of all, um, if there's an underlying theme about anything that we're going to do mobile-wise, it is going to be um, simplicity. All right, We want to keep it simple. It, it, that, that's a win on, on every count if you keep it simple. All right. Therefore, probably not multiple columns, probably one column. Um, probably don't go crazy with background images. Um, be very judicious in the content that you, you make available um, for, for the web all right, uh, in, in a mobile environment. Um, so now we're going to look at that and, and sort of, oh, computer is mine. Um, the, the good news is, is that um, we've been following um, practices that will allow us to fairly easy transition into this. There's only a few things that we need to tighten up. Um, the underlying assumption when we talk about this is, first of all, that um, the, the HTML, that is the content of the page, and the CSS are clearly separated. And we've already seen tastes of that with CSS Zen Garden and a number of your assignments, uh, not, uh, a number of your assignments that you've turned in. That gives you the potential to do a lot of great things. Gives you the potential to allow people to customize the look of your site. You know, if you go into Angel, for example, you can change the color schemes to make it more readable or just something that you like. Uh, It makes it easy to change your site if something changes about your organization. For example, some organizations are seasonal and they might want a different theme depending on the time of year. You know, All these things are, are uh, a consequence of having a good uh, separation between CSS and HTML. And as far as mobile goes, we're just continuing in that trend. There's some specific things, though, that we're going to look at to make your site more mobile friendly or not. Yeah. I have a feeling uh, the squirrel in it probably is getting tired. <laughs> that powers it. Actually, that reminds me, I actually have my pocket. A couple of acorns. <laughs> I should feed one to it. Yeah, maybe that'll get him or her going. Uh, I don't know, I almost got hit by these acorns the other day. Yeah, it's like, why does he have acorns in his pocket <laughs> is the question. <laughs> Pardon me? No, no, uh, not, not on purpose, anyhow. Uh, uh, actually, the one day, uh, um, I don't know, the, the tree out there, like when the wind blows, those things come flying at you. And, and they, they come, these two almost beam me, and I thought, I'm going to take these so they don't hurt anyone else, you know, like they, like they so I can throw them back at the tree, right? Yeah, it's about this time semester, I think, that, you know, the, the shards of my sanity uh, start to fall apart. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be the problem. So let's go and look at that one article that I pointed out last time because it's a great resource as far as mobile development. And it's going to point 
uh, to the three principles that we're going to want to accomplish in our designs for mobile. Responsive design. Responsive design simply means that your web page adapts itself to the environment that it's in. All right. Now, this is this concept has been around in general terms for a while. Some pages, for example, have a different CSS file if you go to print it than if you view it on the screen. You know, if you view it on the screen, you might want to see all the nice pictures and all that. If you print it, chances are you just want the text. In which case, the CSS design is liable to be simpler. The very bottom, they talk about the three ideas here. The way forward, fluid grids, flexible images, and media queries. All right, we're going to cover these in order. Flexible grids, we have probably we have talked about to a degree. That is where you use the float command and use things based on percentages to size the content uh, on your screen. I believe we have an example of that. I believe we do not have an example of that. They clean this machine up. So let's go and let's pull the example probably from last week, Monday. I heard there were some viruses on this machine. That's probably why they, they're cleaning it up. Which one was it? Well, you know what? We will make a brand new one. It won't hurt us to do that. Copy. Paste. I don't know what I'm doing this morning. I'll call it mobile. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to associate this with the style sheet mobile. And I'm going to implement fluid grids. All right. And I'm going to create four sections that I'm going to float. I'll get rid of all the CSS code. And right now we should have just four sections of our page. Which we do. All right. We'll leave, we'll leave the links in. Why not? All right. <clears throat> so. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to par start putting some style on these. And I will do it by saying I'll, I'll assign a style, a style to the class part. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a width, a, a min width actually, not a width, 
but a min width of 350 pixels. And then I'm going to do a width of, let's say, 50%, and I'm going to float them to the left. All right. So let's go and view this now. All right. in width of 200 pixels. Oh. We'll make we'll make a we'll keep it at 400, but we will say min width of 40 and we'll give a border. And we'll give a margin Um, one second. Uh, the, the, the minimum width, what that does is that says it's going to be 40% of the width, but it won't get any smaller than 400 pixels. Let's actually make this 300. All right. So now we have these four things stacked next to each other. All right. And as we resize it, Notice it gets bigger and smaller. But at a certain point, notice what happens. Boom. It becomes, goes down and becomes single column. All right. That is what's meant by a fluid grid. It's not a rigid 2x2 two two grid that stays stuck at a 2x2 two two grid. All right. It is a grid that, depending on the size of the screen, it formats itself to fit the screen correctly. All right. Um, let's go in and let's put a color on each of these to make it uh, a little more obvious. scratching my head when it didn't work. All right. So there's our four things. And again, notice how the grid is fluid. Two by two until we get to a certain point. All right. And then it pops down to being a one column design. The typical size of a mobile device would probably be like this. All right. Now, that begs a question. Um, probably some of you have smartphones, but you probably only have one, right? You probably don't have uh, an iPhone and an Android phone and one of those. Oh, what's the new one with the really big screen? The Samsung? Yeah, Samsung Galaxy. And you don't have all those different things to test on. So how do you test your site in a mobile environment? All right. Pardon me? Yeah, one way is through an emulator. And I have posted a link on Angel to a popular emulator, which is the emulator by the Opera web browser. So let's go and download that and install it. That's under resources. Yeah. So I can go and I can install this. Hope it lets me do it, and they haven't changed permissions to prohibit that. Probably bribe the squirrel with another acorn. Good thing I was there. All right. Yep. 
figures. We'll pretend then. We'll pretend by making our, we'll use our imagination. We'll pretend by simply making the screen uh, narrower. All right. Uh, you can install this on your machine now. Uh, and, and it's nice because when you run it, you get the choice of like what sort of phone you want to emulate. And then you pick that and it comes up and then you can go and drag your page onto that and, and get an idea. All right. So at any rate, the first part of mobile design is fluid grids. So if you can imagine, this is what this page would look like on a desktop. This is what it would sort of look like on a mobile, which is pretty cool, right? We could, you know, um, obviously we'd do a lot more uh, with this, but again, the, the basic idea of it shows that this is workable both in a wider environment and in that, in, in a narrower environment like you'd have on a mobile device. Now, you wouldn't just want to make it like 400 pixels wide because then, you know, if you had a big screen, you'd be wasting a lot of space. This allows you to do this. Now, if you can imagine, all right, I put just a paragraph of text here as a dummy. Uh, dummy field, but this is a placeholder for any chunks of something, right? These could be thumbnails, these could be images, these could be almost anything that you could imagine, all right? So don't think like literally like it has to be like this. What's represented, in, what, what these blocks represent is any chunk of HTML you wanted, all right? And again, you can do some real cool things even like with thumbnails, like I said before. Whereas on a bigger screen, maybe you have a 10 by 10 grid of thumbnails, but on a narrower screen, maybe you have a, let's see, uh, a 10 by 10 will be 100. Maybe you have a 4 by 25 grid of, of thumbnails. All right, so that's the first um, leg, if you will, in our three-legged set of tools. The next one is flexible images. All right, normally we've been used to doing images like this. And let me go and find an image that we can use. I'm going to go uh, to Flickr and do a search for Creative Commons image of autumn. Because it's feeling like autumn today. Actually, not true. It's kind of feeling like winter today. Well, not, let's not get crazy. It's not that cold. It is funny, though. My daughter, like, you know, oh, my God, it's so cold this morning. It's like, what are you going to do in December or, or January or February when it's actually cold, you know? Wow. Wow. All right, so I'm searching for Creative Commons licensed uh, materials. And I guess it really doesn't matter which one I pick. We'll, we'll go with this one. I like the colors in the backgrounds. So I'll go and I'll go under Actions, View All Sizes, and I will download let's say the medium size and I'll save it to the desktop or actually I'll save it to the layouts folder and I will call it autumn and I'll grab the URL for this so I can put it in the credits So, let's say I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put an image in here. Alright. 
Now let's go and look at our page. All right. Ah, we messed up a little bit. Let's go and try. What do I want to do here? Let's make the image. I'm going to edit the image to make it the size that I want it to be. of its current size. Make it a little smaller than 80% of its current size. So let's make it All right, so it's 360 now. Let's go and let's make let's make the minimum width 350. Or yeah, three. Well, let's go with 370. Let's see what we're getting. All right, that's what we have, all right? And notice even in this environment, the, the thing arranged itself. Now notice what happens as we make this smaller. If we make it smaller at a certain point, it cuts off. All right, what we can actually do is we can actually associate a percentage with that image instead of giving it we haven't given any width to it. We haven't given any size to it. Therefore, the size of the image matches what physically the size of that, that JPEG file is. What we can do instead is we can go in and we can say, we can say any image has a width of 100%. So we give a percentage size instead of a actual size in terms of number, number of pixels. So Let's go and make this 250, and we'll make the width 30%. So we should have on a wide screen, we should have three side by side. All right, so there, three side by side. Now, notice that as it gets smaller, actually the image gets smaller. And as it gets bigger, the image gets bigger. actually give a width of 40. I want to show this more dramatically. There we go. As we make it smaller, the image gets smaller up to the minimum width. So that way you won't have a big old image hanging off the side of your phone screen. It will size itself to that. Now remember Whenever you give a percentage, it's always related to the percentage of the, of the space that's available. So in this case, 100% isn't the width of the whole screen, right? You might, you, you might be, maybe not, but you might be surprised that it didn't take up the whole width of the screen. Well, that image is in one of these parts which has a width of 40%. So that's what is going to constrain what 100% is. It's 100% of whatever that image's container is, all right? And since that image is in this guy, the image isn't going to get any bigger 
than the div or, or the section that contains it is. All right. So that's the second thing with mobile design, mobile web design is uh, what what they call it? The dynamic images, fluid images. Let's see the exact word they used. Flexible images. All right. The last one is media queries, and I would suspect the first two things are were, were if you didn't know them, they, they, they're pretty obvious, right? Uh, you know, it, they're not brand new concept. The last one, last concept is a little bit foreign, all right? And that is the concept of a media query, all right? Now, what is a media query? A media query is where we can actually apply a different style sheet based on how the page is being accessed. The one example I gave is you can display on the screen one way and have a different version if you go to print it. All right, that's one way that you can do it. But you can also have a different look to your page based on whether it's on a mobile device or not. All right, and you can do that via a media query. Now, this brings in a concept that's called, there, there, there's, actually a couple of flavors of this concept, but um, we're going to focus on one, and that is um, what is called progressive enhancement. Progressive enhancement is like this. We have a basic web page. We want to create a style so it looks good on the absolute lowest common denominator. In other words, we want it to look good on the dinkiest, worst phone, monitor, whatever you want to call it. All right? So you got a little bitty phone with a little screen that has a web browser in it so you can view web pages, but it's not a smartphone. The screen isn't, isn't beautiful. No retina display. You know, none of that kind of stuff. Or you have an old monitor that you bought at a thrift store, all right? that has, uh, uh, you know, 640 by 480 resolution or something like that. The idea is, is we're going to create a style sheet for that baseline. Then we're going to add stuff onto it for people that have better equipment. All right. We can do that by putting in two style sheets. And we've seen an example of two style sheets before when I took and I put the Firefox code, the Firefox hacks in its own file. All right. We're going to see that now where we're going to have sort of a baseline style sheet. That's the one that I've called mobile. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a second style sheet in with a media query so that on a larger screen it's going to look better than on a smaller screen. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to look here, and I'm going to copy their line because I almost always get this wrong. I'm going to create a second style sheet. called desktop all right and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add that to my page with a media query. Maybe.
slightly simpler version of it. Okay, now let's look at this and see what it says. This says, I have a style sheet. The link to that style sheet is desktop.css, but I don't always want to apply that style sheet. I only want to apply it when I'm on a computer screen and the maximum device width is 480 pixels. Or actually, I'm going to do the reverse. The minimum is 481 or bigger. So what this says is, if I'm not on a desktop machine, if I'm on a phone, or if for whatever reason my width is less than 481, all right, it will not apply this style sheet. It will only apply this style sheet if I'm viewing a computer screen and the width is at least 481. All right. So, let's go and let's put something in that style sheet. And I'm just going to put something small in that style sheet. But keep in mind that you could extend this whatever you want, uh, however you want. I'm going to put a, just a background image on the body on the style sheet. I'm going to go and put on the desktop version of the page. I'm going to go put so now. When I go view this page, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? We can almost guess this one by now because we're in IE. And be worried for a second there. So this is the second use of this little if statement. Not really. Not really. So now, did I save it? I save this. Let's see if this works in Firefox. Yeah. Shoot. That look right? Background. Well, let's do this. Oh, duh. Never mind. Never mind. I'm a dummy. I got to get rid of this media query, right? Because IE does not understand media queries. 
So when I copied that code to put along with the HTML5 shiv, I kept the media query in there, which really didn't buy me anything because I the whole problem is that IE doesn't get media queries. Now, bang, there we go. Or bang, there's our background pattern. Okay. So let's understand what's happening here. And again, keep in mind that there's the IE world, then there's everyone else. And unfortunately, we don't have the Firefox browser to demonstrate this. Um, this is something, uh, unfortunately for the folks at home, I'm going to take the first two minutes of lab and demonstrate this up, upstairs on a machine that has a mobile emulator installed so that we can see it. But notice what happens. If everyone gets this style sheet, so it doesn't matter if you're on a phone or what you're on. You get this style sheet. If you're on a screen, computer screen, and the minimum device width is at least 481, you will also get this style sheet too. And then in addition, then we have this catch-in for IE that says, hey, if you're on IE and you're less than 9, put in the HTML5 shiv and also apply the desktop style sheet. Because if you're running IE, you're, you're on a computer. So you always want that style sheet. All right. Now, well, one second. All I did was change the background on that desktop. But the sky's the limit, right? You could do all sorts of things with this. You could, for example, say, if I'm on a desktop, Maybe I want the minimum width to be 350 pixels, 20% of the screen float left, and a 2 pixel red border. Notice how things shifted a little bit. Let's make the minimum width 200. So they go all the way across on a big screen. And if we were to view this on a mobile which we, we don't have the ability to do now, but we'll go and do it up in lab. I encourage you all at home to download that mobile emulator and install it and try running this example and, and drag the example onto the mobile emulator. And, and, we'll see, uh, and you'll see that it will not apply that style sheet. So again, the idea with progressive enhancement is you can define a couple different style sheets. All right. Everyone gets this one, only the higher level systems get this one. You had your hand up a second ago? Um, that is a great question. The problem with this is that things sometimes don't identify themselves correctly. Because actually, screen is meant to be a computer screen. So I imagine web TV would fit in that as well. But actually, some phones identify themselves as having a screen. A phone actually should identify itself as being a handheld device. So it should be handheld instead of screen. But again, this is an imperfect world. Um, so w things don't always identify themselves what they really are. All right. So therefore, we have that catch in there about the width, OK? So yeah, OK, if you're a phone pretending to be a computer screen, that's OK. We're going to catch you with the width, all right, and make sure that that's, that's not applied. OK? Other questions? Yes?
keep in mind that 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 is that is um, that can be a confusing uh, thing. All right. Keep in mind that the that, that that really is most relevant when you're talking about printing the image. All right, because on a screen, it doesn't matter what the image is. All right the dimensions of the image are more important than the density of the image. All right? So if it's a 400 by 300 image, it's going to take up 400 by 300 pixels. All right? Now your monitor has a certain density that you can't change. Right? I mean, if you have a, a image at one density versus another, when you display the higher density one, it doesn't automatically give you an HD high density monitor. Right? You're, you're stuck with the same density. So the image is going to be displayed according to the monitor's de uh, resolution and density. All right. So that's more relevant when it uh, when you're talking about printing it out. It's also uh, and what what's relevant as far as displaying it on the screen is the the dimensions in terms of pixels. So yeah, if you go to print it out, you'll get a better quality. You know, if it's a higher. That actually took me a long time to get my head around. Because that's very confusing. And that also has implications as far as uh, mobile development, too. Not mobile web, but, but, but mobile apps, when, when you develop Android apps. Because, uh, you know, each phone, or, or not each phone, but, but there's, a, there's a big variance in how dense the pixels on the screens are on, on mobile phones. Other questions? All right, so let's review the three pieces from a technical level. All right, remember, always two hats that you wear as a web designer. There's a technical and there is a design. The technical level says, how do I do these things? What things are good for me to do? And in terms of mobile development, mobile web pages, the three things that are good to do are listed right up here at the bottom of this. Fluid grids. So not defining things in terms of an absolute number of pixels. It's okay to give a minimum width, all right? But don't give it hard-coded a width of 500 pixels. Because if you do, if someone's on a narrow phone, stuff gets cut off, all right? Flexible images. Give express image size in terms of percentages, all right? And then finally, the use of media queries to accomplish progressive enhancement. That is, you'll create a baseline CSS file that's like the bare minimum. This is what people are going to see. All right. And then, on top of that, you're going to add stuff. Now, we could do all kinds of cool stuff. For example, let's just let's finish up with this. And again, I want to spend... Uh, I, I want to spend like five minutes in lab showing this on a mobile device, all right? Because, um, uh, again, unfortunately the folks at home won't see this, but at least the folks that are here will get a better sense of this as opposed to relying on my description. Let's go find a YouTube video. I actually called someone today and I got placed on hold, and this was the hold music, probably familiar to some of you. This guy. So go, and I'm going to click. I'm going to get the code to embed this video in my web page. I may be an orthodontist, but I know a thing or two about. All right. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put this on my web page. Put a section for it. I'll call the section video. Now, 
now. Watch what I can do. I can go in my mobile CSS and say, you know what? I don't want to show that video on the mobile version of the page. It just gets in the way. It's clutter. All right. So I can say, the ID of video, make the visibility hidden. And then, on the desktop CSS, I can make the visibility of that visible. Now, we'll only be able to see half of this during the lecture, but when we go up to lab, we'll see the second half of this. So I go and save this and view my page again. I can see it on the desktop version. All right. If I were to view this page on the mobile, I would not be able to see it. All right. So you can put more content on your full page than you than you put on your mobile page, right? And, and that's good. If you think about it, a mo uh, a desktop page probably should have more stuff on it than a mobile page. A mobile being the smaller screen, and given the fact that people, <coughs> excuse me, visiting the mobile site are apt to have different goals, and so on and so forth. It's reasonable to say that we want more stuff on the full version of our page than the mobile version. Well, this is one way that we can, we can do that. All right. Now, again, just to review, because we have two style sheets, how do we know which one applies? Well, the one that applies second overwrites the stuff on the other one. So the, the order of this is important. So, for example, in this style sheet, I made the video invisible. In this style sheet, I made it visible again. All right. So it's important that the enhanced one appears after the basic one. All right. Um, if there's something that isn't defined in the enhanced one, the nature of cascading style sheets is that we'll get the styles from the other one. So I didn't go, even though we're on the full version, I didn't go and give these guys colors. Yet they have the colors in the basic one. Why? Because I didn't override it. All right. So really, both style sheets apply. And if there's a conflict between the two, all right, the second one wins. All right. Now you can use the important attribute to override that and all that. But for the most part, it's good practice. Basic one on top, enhanced one on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this example. We'll go up the lab and we'll view this uh, either via an emulator or I have a mobile device that we'll, we'll view it under and, and we'll see how that, how that goes. All right. See you up in lab. still downloads the code, but it doesn't download the video. Okay. So in other words, which is minimal, right. So, so for example, in that case, there was a chunk of code that I copied and pasted from YouTube. All right. That code would download even on a mobile device, but it would be made invisible. But that chunk of code is only, like you say, you know, maybe, maybe 200 characters big. So it really wouldn't matter that much. Good, good question, though. That could become a problem if you had massive amounts of code that you were hiding, or massive amounts of images that you were hiding. In which case, maybe you wouldn't take this strategy. Maybe you'd take another strategy of having the web server direct people to a mobile version of the site versus a full version. Great question. <laughs>